protesters saying that the best way to tackle that inflation isn't to raise interest rates anymore. And I must say there are quite a few people, including myself here in the City of London, who agree with them, who think that given that we've had 13 successive interest rate rises since December 2021, that the Bank of England's done enough. And with the UK economy now on a knife edge, you had 0% growth in May. Uh, that the best thing that the Bank of England can do now is hold fire to cool their boots and to just sit on the current interest rate of 5%. So there has been some protest. There's also not, I would say, not a consensus here at all about what the Bank of England should do. I think we may have a three-way split on the Monetary Policy Committee. That, what does that mean? That means that some of them may vote to go from 5 to 5.5%. Some may vote to go to 5.25%. And some of the nine economists on the Monetary Policy Committee in the building behind me there, the Bank of England, may even vote for rates to be on hold. I think on balance, Mark and Pip, the most likely outcome in just a couple of minutes or even less than that will be a quarter point rise to 5.25%. And if that does happen, if you've got a £200,000 mortgage on a 25-year uh, repayment term, that's going to add about £30 a month, three to £400 a year to your mortgage payments, just from that quarter point interest rate rise, if indeed that is what happens. Yeah, and of course, the, the other thing is that they're going to give an indication, their forecast, as where they see things going and whether we'll have more interest rate. It is 5.25. We're just getting out through five and a quarter percent, up another quarter percent, as expected from many economists. That's really interesting, Mark, you know, because just a couple of weeks ago, a lot of people would have said that the Bank of England needs to do a half point rise from five to five and a half percent, given that inflation in the UK is unusually high. We're at 7.9 percent in June. And we had that, that's much, much higher than in the eurozone, where inflation is averaging 5.5 percent. And in America, 3 percent, repeat, 3 percent inflation across the pond in the US. So we do still have high interest rates uh, and high inflation. I think the fact that inflation came down from 8.7% to 7.9%, it's quite a chunky fall. That means that the Bank of England feels it didn't have to raise interest rates by half a point. It's just gone for a quarter point rise. It'll be interesting to see the language that the Monetary Policy Committee releases in its press communique. We'll be looking at that in a moment to see if there are any clues at all. But for now, it's a quarter point rise to 5.25 percent, the 14th successive interest rate rise in a row since December 2021. And I repeat, if you've got a £200,000 mortgage at about 6 or 6.25 percent or whatever it is, and you're on a 25-year repayment term, this one move today from the Bank of England is going to add about £30 a month, about three or £400 a year to your mortgage payments, just today's interest rate rise. So this is a serious decision that will affect millions and millions of people. And let's see how quick the banks are to pass on this interest rate rise to savers, because they've been pretty sluggish over recent months. Has this announcement, Liam, nudged us further towards a possible recession? Interesting you say that, Pip. I think if it had been a half point rise from five to five and a half percent, a lot of people would say, my God, the Bank of England is trying to almost provoke a recession. A recession is two successive quarters of negative economic growth. The Bank of England, by the way, in that building behind me, they were predicting the UK would go into recession. It hasn't yet. It's been pretty resilient, our economy. We're still attracting a lot of inward investment in this country. Consumer sentiment, despite being battered by all those interest rate rises, is pretty resilient in this country, as is business investment. Having said that, this quarter point rise it will also attract criticism because it's the 14th rise in a row. Some people were calling for interest rates to be held, including myself. I've been saying that since March or April, given that the rises in interest rates that we've already have work with long and variable lags. It takes a long time for monetary policy interest rate rises to feed through not to mortgage payments, but to broader economic behaviour, not least business investment and so on. So I think the Bank of England steered a middle ground here between a big chunky 50 basis point rise to 5.5 percent and keeping interest rates on hold or at 5%. So it's a quarter point rise, what we expected, as I say, with a £200,000 mortgage on a 25-year term, 
Today's decision alone will add around £30 a month, around three to £400 a year to the mortgage payments of a household. While you're speaking, Liam, we're watching uh, pictures of protests outside the Bank of England, uh, positive money protesters who are calling for a windfall tax on banks. We didn't see such demonstrations last time there was a rise, did we? No, we didn't. And we should be absolutely clear, the pictures that you're seeing that I'm talking over now, they were from earlier this morning, where a, a, a protest group called Positive Money came to the Bank of England here in Red Threadneedle Street in the City of London. If I can just look away for a moment, there are no protesters here now. You can take my word for it. What do those campaigners want? They want to see interest rate rises stalled. I'm sure quite a lot of mortgage holders right. would agree Liam, with them, even I'm, if lots of I'm, people I'm, who've got savings wouldn't. Liam, I'm just going to interrupt you because we've got details coming through from the Monetary Policy Committee, which you explained uh, looking to who voted which way. Six members of the Nine Strong Committee voting to increase, but two others, Jonathan Haskell and Catherine Mann, voted for a half-point increase. So even going further, only one, Swatdringa, preferring to keep the rate at 5%. Now, that's interesting that there was even a decision or, or, or a contention that, you know, it had to go even further. It is. And as I predicted, it's a, it's a three-way split, which is unusual on the Monetary Policy Committee. You've got a member there, for, a relatively new member from the London School of Economics, Hold, uh, voting to keep rates on hold at 5%. You've got two other members voting for 5.5%, and then you had the majority, six of the nine, voting to keep rates on hold at 5.25%. I think what this shows, Mark, when you've got a three-way split, is there's lots of confusion and uncertainty. And yeah. that, for me, the fact that you had somebody who was prepared to go with what I've been saying to keep rates on hold, which was a, a heretical point of view until just a few weeks ago, shows that maybe the Bank of England is coming round to the view that UK interest rates have now peaked. I certainly hope that that's the case. Much will depend on the latest inflation numbers that come out in a couple of weeks' time.